Hi, my name's Steve Green. I'm Deputy Head here at Queen's responsible for teaching and learning. Of course, families choose to come to a fantastic school like Queen's for a huge variety of different reasons. But academic results, success in public examinations, and progression onto courses at top universities are right at the top of the list for most people. Our reputation here at Queen's for fantastic teaching and learning comes from a whole variety of different factors. Of course, we're well known for our small class sizes, our subject specialist expertise in all of our teaching departments, and our focus on research-led and progressive teaching and learning. On top of that, of course, we have dedicated and very well-resourced specialist teaching areas right across the different subjects. All of these things lead to fantastic results at both GCSE and A-level. Attainment is very high and pupils make excellent progress that significantly exceeds national norms. Just as some examples of that, over the last three years, progress at A-level here at Queen's, from an already high starting point at GCSE, has been in the top quartile and in 2020 was in the top 5% of all schools nationally. 47% of our A-level entries last year were at A or A-star and 91% at A-star to C. Our teachers know their pupils and they know their classes well. They provide individualised attention for every pupil through regular feedback. We run baseline tests here set by Durham University's Centre for Evaluation and Monitoring at both year seven and year 10. And then we track students' progress based on ambitious targets that are reviewed annually. Our academic courses are taught through Monday to Friday. We don't run any Saturday lessons, but of course our sport, outdoor activity and fixture programme takes place on the weekend. We run a broader curriculum for as long as possible. So we run a two year key stage four with options taken in year nine. We have an excellent choice of A-level subjects, including level three courses, new for this year, including sport, business, marketing, and outdoor pursuits. On top of that, from an academic perspective, we have plenty of enrichment opportunities within subject areas, including a wide variety of trips and visits, a scholars programme, and lots of visiting speakers, for example, the annual Royal Society Chemistry Lectures. We have a strong focus on languages here, with modern foreign languages being encouraged for all. The vast majority of our students will take two modern foreign languages at Key Stage 3, that's in years 7, 8 and 9. And we encourage at least one language for all at GCSE, but we don't make it compulsory. We have a strong focus on our support in lessons, both for students with SEND and for our learning development department as a whole. We run one-to-one -one and small group lessons for those who need that little bit extra, whether that be literacy support, study skills, or perhaps extra math, for example. We have a specialist EAL or English as an additional language department for those who need support or would like to gain qualifications in English when it's not their first language. And a high proportion of our students in year 12 and then into year 13 study for an extended project qualification or EPQ, most of which takes place during the second half of year 12 and the first part of year 13. In terms of progression for our young people, we have a very strong uh, focus on UCAS support to make sure that our students can secure the very best possible places at university, including notable examples not just to Oxford and Cambridge and across the Russell Group, but universities all around the world. We also support students through our dedicated careers advisor to pursue meaningful work experience and secure apprenticeships, internships, and where necessary, employment. Of course, over this last year now, we've been having to engage at times in both remote learning and hybrid learning. And it's important to note that we have really been at the cutting edge of what's possible in terms of remote learning whilst we've been going through this period where schools have had to close to the vast majority of students. We run our full academic timetable and our co-curricular programme that follows our normal timetable. 
Now, of course, we all hope that this won't be needed for very much longer. But I feel sure that there will be elements of our new learning in terms of the way in which we deliver remote teaching and learning that will help develop our practice in the future. All of our students at the moment, even when we are teaching remotely, are in live lessons with their regular teachers from 8.20 in the morning until 3.30 in the afternoon. And then there are a further two hours of clubs, societies and activities to make sure that those enrichment opportunities continue, even despite the current challenges. I can proudly say that we now have a whole raft of highly skilled remote teachers and we can guarantee that our students don't suffer from learning loss and are fully engaged in our programme. This has been uh, shown, I think, probably most strongly by a recent parental feedback where we looked at our provision and that fantastic feedback has come from both our parents and our students. Overall, I think it's important to note that what we do here, both in terms of our pastoral and our academic focus, is put the student first. Everything is focused on helping young people to develop their talents so that they can meet their full academic potential.